Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for your presence and we thank you for giving us the privilege to lift up our voices in song and lift up our hands without wrath or doubting. We thank you, Lord, for the power of praise and the fact that you dwell in our praise. We thank you, Lord, that there's a humongous transaction that happens from heaven to earth when your people get together and lift up their hands and their voices, their hearts to you. So Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, let this be a further time of impartation that you quicken and you deposit something in your people that accelerates their journey of faith into the things that you've promised in your word. Thank you, Father, for processing us now and getting us ready for the great things that you're about to do on this earth. Oh, we are people who have a great hope in you. We have a reason to look up, to smile and to be glad and to have a reason to get out of the bed every day. Lord, when people are committing suicide and are depressed, Lord, you have given us a reason to smile and to rejoice, to be glad because you have given us a future, God, and it is a good future. And so, Lord, we walk it out, Lord, with, with diligence and with great expectation in Jesus' name. So let this word, Lord, today be deposited permanently in our hearts and we receive it now. Everyone say, I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 62 is where we've been working from. We're still in this series, and I'm just trying to be as loose as I can just to sense the spirit, and even though we, we are, you know, we, we, we have a foundation that we're working from. Um, I'm, I'll just want the spirit to take us wherever he wants. And uh, in Isaiah 62, we're in a series called More of God 2018. And it's kind of an odd, odd uh, thing titled, but it's, it's what I heard, More of God 2018. Uh, this is a year of more. Um, at the end of the year, the beginning of the year, the Lord said to me, uh, bigger, better, more of God, more of God. And that's an equation that you, you, cannot, you cannot fail when God gives you more of himself. Can y'all hear that? You, you cannot fail when God gives you more of himself. And what, it, what, is, what people are, are awakening to, or they're going to awake to is that all of their endeavors and efforts to succeed in life will not happen in and of themselves, but that God has already planned your success. And God awaits our submission to his words. So that it's, it's, it's you know, sometimes we like to cut out the middleman and, and get right to the, the deal, the results, uh, but when it comes to God, you don't cut out the middle man because he is, he provides the middle. We go through him to get to the father. We go through God to get to every promise that the father has declared. We have to go through Jesus. And he says here in chapter uh, 62, verse 10, he says, go through. Everybody say, go through. Go through. So go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Because this is God's mission to reach the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, literally build up, build up the way. Gather out the stones, take, all, take out all the things that offend, the things that people tend to hang on to. Take it out, get rid of it. Lift up a standard for the people. You know, Jesus is the standard. He said, if I be lifted up, didn't he say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. 
Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him. Say, his reward is with him. Say, the Lord is coming. And his reward is with him. Yeah, and he says, and his work is before him. Say that, his work is before him. So this tells us that the reward is not for your self-indulgence. The reward is his power and his glory that he's bringing to this earth and it is for a work. It is for a work that only God can do but he wants to employ his people to do a work but it, the work is accomplished through the power of the reward. All right. The work that God has for us to do that's before us, that's in front of us, See, we've been going to church and we've been struggling and we've been going through our processes and suffering and afflictions and all of that. And all the time hearing the word, praising him, going to church, supposed to be growing up in the word. But this was all to get us ready to receive the reward so that we can really do the work of the Lord, which we cannot do without the Lord. And God wants to add to us abundantly in all measures so that we will be instrumental in representing him to the rest of the world. All right. So if you've got, if you're still sitting on the doctrine that, you know, we're getting ready to get out of here, God's coming to rapture us right away, you're sitting on the wrong stump. You can, you can pack up all your rapture suitcases and all of that and put it back in the closet. We're not going anywhere right now because God has too much work to be done to pull, to pull all of these people out of the darkness. All right. There's still millions and millions of people that have got to be pulled out of the darkness. And he's getting ready to transform the whole landscape of his church and change the way you see, the way you think, so that you won't think the way you think now, because God's not interested in coming to make your present life a better life. He's coming to give you a whole new life altogether. The reward is going to change your life altogether. Amen. So he says, and they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out. You're going to be sought out. When millions of people come looking for those who have been blessed by the Lord and know his ways, and there'll be a city not forsaken. So it's interesting. He says the work. Everybody say his work is before him. Uh-huh, because that's what I want you to keep that thought. We're getting ready for a work. So if you say, Lord, bless me, bless you for what? All right. Bless you for what? For what reason? You got to have a reason to be blessed. All right. Why is God going to add to you and how much will he bless you? All right. How much do you, are you looking to be blessed? Are you looking to be blessed so that you can have your own house, your own car, and have it all paid off, have your, your business, and it's profitable. Why do we want God to bless us? All right, why? What, for what reason? Is it for selfish reasons? Is it to make yourself look good? Is it so that you can say, the Lord, bless me, hallelujah, I got mine, you got to go get yours? All right. No, 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 no. Everything that God is about to do now, and we're in that season, and we're in that transition, the people of God are about to be abundantly blessed, Amen. especially if they're opening their hearts to the word. The word has to be united with your heart, and your heart has to be dedicated to his word. That is the way God controls us, influences us, inspires us, the way he guides us, because his word is a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. See, people want the things of God, but they don't want to be guided by God. We want God to bless us, but we want to choose our own way of living and go our own direction. But see, what God is calling us into as the church as believers in God, is to become united with his word 
His word will purify our hearts and our hearts will be dedicated to his mission and his purpose to do his will. And because of that, because we're dedicated to that, God will not withhold any good thing from you. Everything will be added to you. Everything will be added to you. Can y'all hear that? All right. So, so, but in, in Matthew 11, he says, take my yoke upon you, 29. It says, take my yoke upon you. Take my, my yoke upon you. Let's, let's deal with this. Take my yoke upon you. All right. Everybody say, Lord, put your yoke upon me. Yeah. See, you, we, we're going to talk about your personal dedication and what that looks like. What does that look like to be dedicated? And, and anything, any, anytime this type of language, and this king is, is, is English, is the king's English, the picture of a yoke, that's a strong picture, all right? Because though we're free, and we are free, but this is a, a yoke that makes you free. It's kind of a <laughs> paradox. All right? A yoke, you're yoked to the one that makes you free. And we're going to kind of hopefully lift this up for you to hear and you to absorb. And may the Lord make the deposit and impartation through this. Uh, but he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And everybody say, learn of me. Learn. Uh, you're gonna learn. What we're learning, right? We're, we're to learn of who? Of the word, of Jesus the word. Right. Jesus is the word. Right. And he said, take my what? Yoke and what? So what does that mean? You have to learn what? You have to learn the word because the word is the yoke that connects you and unifies you with Jesus. All right. The word is the yoke. He says, for the yoke is easy and my burdens are light. But let me be back up. He says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Your souls, your souls are going to stop working for itself. Because your soul has been self-employed so far. Uh, you've been trying to do everything yourself. Go your own way. Build your own life. Find your own success. You've been trying to figure out how to go. But your soul has been so self-employed. And God says, your soul is fired. Uh, your soul is fired from trying to be self-reliant. All right. And I'm calling you to unite your soul with my word so that when you connect to me through the word, my words, your soul won't have to figure out how to succeed. You won't have to work your own way into the things of God. God will teach you and grow you into him because he has everything. All right. And so the word is going to yoke you for the sake of guiding you. And for the and, and and look, a yoke goes on the neck of a beast of burden to carry and do service, labor. But this is not the labor that the soul was accustomed to. This is a different labor. This is a different work. You used to work to try to see if you can be, you know approved for being righteous or you might have believed you were to work your way to heaven I'm just trying to make it in you can't do anything to make it in that work is not your work your work is to believe on him whom God has sent and his work gets you in you're yoked to the one who does the work and you go with him and you unify with him through his words. All right. So he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we know what Jesus went with. If we don't, he's talking to those who are under the law, the Ten Commandments, who worked under the, the, the burden of flesh, trying to do righteous things uh, for God. And he says, you cannot carry that burden. You can't do that work the work that I'm calling you to is under a different yoke. I'm going to free you from the yoke of trying to walk by the law, and I'm going to bring you to the yoke of having faith in my word. All right? 
So the yoke is an apparatus that goes around the neck. All right? Y'all see yokes before? It goes around the neck. And when the yoke goes around the neck, uh, it is for working and for being guided. But the neck represents one's will. Okay? Say, why the neck? The neck has to do with the will. Everybody say, I have a will. I have a will. <laughs> say, I've been exercising my will. Like I want to. Like I want to. Uh-huh. And he says, yoke yourself to me. Put the yoke on your neck or on your wheel so that you no longer are exercising your own will. Y'all, y'all chewing on that? There's a... Uh, I can't remember where it is, but I think God referred in one instance where his people refuse. And, and he summarized that they would not or could not turn the neck. And, and, and you know, when you, when you think about what that means to turn the neck, in the animal kingdom, you look at pack animals like dogs or wolves, you know, they recognize uh, sub, or they submit or they recognize who the alpha, the, ch the big dog, the top dog in the pack. They recognize that through confrontation and contest and when dogs contest with each other, wolves, they will end up biting on the neck. And when they feel those fangs in the neck and you're pinned down and that dog lays down and you, he, the other dog's got his fangs in the neck. That means that dog says he, he's turning the neck saying, I, I submit to you, you're in charge. You know, I can't, I can't overpower you. Whatever you do, if you want to eat the first meal, I'll wait till you finish eating the kill and then I'll come after you. But when he turns the neck, it means I've submitted to you because when they, they recognize it. If you ever have a dog and you're trying to get that dog to submit into the household as you being the master and not the dog, Lay that dog down on his side, take your two fingers and press it into his neck. That dog recognizes, he recognizes what that means. He says, oh, I got to turn the neck. I got to submit. This is the master. But what he said to his people, he said, my people are a stiff neck. People. They cannot turn the neck to me. In other words, he said, they don't submit to me. I go out of my way to do all these things to show them that I'm God. The miracles that I've done, I've delivered them out of Egypt. I've provided bread for them or manna for them out of heaven. I've caused water to come out of the flinty rock. I have given them uh, the cloud of, of fire by night and the, cl the, the, the cloud by day. Or, and, and, and I provided for them through the wilderness. I did all these things. And yet my people are a stiff-necked people. They continue to refuse to turn the neck and submit to my words. So they couldn't yoke. They could not yoke to God. All right. So they had to be yoked under, yeah, the law. They had to be yoked under a bondage, uh, just flesh burdens, empty, dead, no life. Jesus comes along and says, I'm going to free you. I'm calling you to myself so that I'm going to, he says, if you, he said to them that believe, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples? That means I'm looking for people who will turn the neck to me and continue in my word and they'll let me direct them and guide them. He says, and you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you that God is drawn to free people? If you've got a self-willed, self-reliance, I'm going to do what I want to do, you're not free. You're in bondage to your own flesh. And God can't come into that. He can't come into your self-will. He can't come into you dominating yourself. Said last Sunday, the word has to dominate your heart. And you'll be free. And when you're free, God says, I'll come in. 
Amen? Amen. Now, the children of Israel, we can learn from them because he said they're stiff-necked people. He watched them for 40 years. He said they provoked me. And the thing I get, began to look at is that people today even, just like the children of Israel, they, 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 they can believe or accept the context of who God is. What I mean by context, God can set the stage. Like I said, he can send the plagues. He can open up the Red Sea. <laughs> he can uh, do all of these things. And he sets the stage and says, this says, all of this I've done, this says I'm God. So the context is set. But now what God is calling for within the context, because every context calls for a specific event to happen, an experience to take place. Just like a stage is set, we can put up microphones, we can put up keyboards, speakers, and all this stuff. And they say, what, what, what is this for? We, we, we set the stage. But what good is the stage being set if nothing ever happens on it? All right. What good is God setting up all of the things that he has done and the miracles and the creation even itself, which is the first miracle that he created everything with his word. He set the context and the event, the main event is for people to walk up on the stage of life and start believing his words. That's the main event. God did everything, and the main event for the human experience is to be on this earth and say, Lord, whatever your word says, I'm here to believe it. I'm here to go through. I know there are mountains. I know there's a Red Sea. I know that I don't have any food or water, but God, your word that proceedeth out of your mouth, I will believe it. Come hell or high water through every storm of darkness, every hill, every valley. Lord, your word is calling me into an experience that my heart must congeal with his words in this life. <laughs> That's what he's calling us into. And what the children of Israel did, scripture says, is that he called them and set the context up of all of this. And he's, the scripture says in Hebrews 4 and 2, he says the gospel was preached unto them just as it was to us. And they did not mix faith with it. You know what they're saying? They refuse to be part of the main event. God set the stage that says, I am God. But people don't want to per participate. They're too afraid, fearful, doubtful, unbelieving to participate and say, I am willing to believe your words. That if there's a mountain in front of me, God, I can't get around that mountain. I can't go over that mountain. That mountain is too big. And God says, what, what does my word say? Are you going to trust me or the mountain? Well, God, there's a red sea in front of me. I, you know, I, they, 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 Pharaoh's coming up behind me. There's mountains over here. What, what, what does my word say? He said, didn't I say I've given you a land flowing with milk and honey? Didn't I say that I've given it to you? That go, go, just go, just go, and I'll do it? What, what, what's the problem here? That, well, God, they get through the wilderness, and they get, he says, now I want you to go over Jordan. But there's giants in the land. Did, didn't I bring you across the Red Sea? Did, didn't I provide for you for these, for these, for all the things, your water, your bread, your clothes, didn't I, Lord, there's giants in the land, listen, but we are grasshoppers in that side. I don't care how big the giants are, what did my words say? Can you please get in the experience? Can you please participate in the main event with me? God says, I want you in the main event with me. I don't, don't just believe that I'm God and I can do everything, but I want you to believe that I'm God. I can do everything through you, through you, 
That's what I want you to believe. I am God. I can do everything through you. That's what faith is calling us to. Faith is the main event. <laughs> they didn't mix faith with it. And they didn't enter into rest. They didn't enter into rest. But the scripture still says, there yet remaineth a rest for the people of God. <laughs> didn't it say that? So what do we have to do? You know, Proverbs 4 and 20 says this, he says, because see, I, I'm tired, I got tired of just looking at the opportunities that I've missed. You know, I miss so many opportunities of having faith. You know, and God starts saying, you, 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 you could have conquered that. You could have overcome that if you had participated in believing my word. But you didn't want to believe my word right there. You wanted to believe what things look like. And, and there's, there's an opportunity every day for us because something is standing in all of our ways. Something is telling us just the opposite of what God has promised and what God says in his word. And we have an everyday opportunity to participate in the main event of believing, believing God's words. Amen. We need some help, brother. We need help with this. Because what God is getting ready to do on this earth it's getting ready to blow everybody's mind. I'm telling you, he's getting ready to really blow all intellectual parameters. He's getting ready to blow out all emotional parameters. He's getting ready to blow out all historical landmines and all those things and markings. You can't look back and say it's like this. You can't think or imagine what, that this is what this is going to be. You can't feel what is about to happen. What God is about to do is so far beyond anything that we have ever, ever known. And we got to get free of our own limited souls. You can't have your offenses in your heart where you are still holding grudges against people and what they said to you and what they've done to you. You got to be free just like, just like it never happened. Whatever happened in your past is in the past. Stop carrying it with you in the main event of having faith in God let it go the God they listen God told us to come as little children anybody read that before you know little children they can go through something and they'll forget about it the next hour they can get hurt or you can disappoint them and they're just they're, they're going on they're going to move right on to the next thing and they're not even thinking about it. They may have cried in the moment, but as soon as they finish crying, they're back playing with the toys. They're going on to the next day. They're not hanging on to anything that happened to them. And God says, I'm calling you, my children, to let your hearts become pure of all the things that have happened to you so that you won't hang on to what this, and they said last week, and they said two years ago, and they said 10 years ago, and what they did 20 years ago. Stop carrying, stop carrying those things in your heart and participate in the main event today of believing my words because I'm taking you somewhere. Amen. Lord, make me a little child. Everybody say that. Lord, make me a little child. Make me as a little child. And by the way, just in case you don't Guess what you're about to see? Little children being used of God. That's what's about to happen too. They're going to be little children being used of God. They're just going to walk around. God's going to tell them, lay hands on this person. They're going to get healed. And that child, without any question, not trying to figure it out, not trying to intellectualize it out, the child just going to go lay hands on that person. That person is going to be healed. You're going to see children, eight, nine years old, pastoring churches, 10, 20,000 strong. Can you imagine that? No, you can't imagine that because, because see, it doesn't fit the intellectual parameters that we're used to. So you're going to walk on and say, oh, man, you see a child pastoring a church 10,000 strong, that must be God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at what the word says. Let's go to Proverbs. 
Because I don't want you to take anything that I hear that you hear me say today and put it on some shelf of, you know, that sounds good and it sounds familiar and I've read that before. What I'm saying to you today is for a present participation and revelation. Okay? This is present revelation. So treat it like you've never heard it before. Because God is going to take this, he's taking his word and the understanding thereof into new realms. He's taking us to new places. Proverbs 4 and 20. You there? He says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. See, <laughs> the participation in this main event daily is to attend to his words. All right. Can y'all hear that? Yes. Attend to his words. Again, the heart of man, the heart of the believer has to be dedicated, turned completely toward God and his words. The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking right now. The Lord is looking right now. You know, he's not sitting on his throne twiddling his thumbs. He's looking right now. Who, who, who can he show himself strong through? Who can I show my strength through? Who can I show my strength through in whose heart are perfect toward me? All right. He's looking to see whose hearts, because what did I say earlier? The heart is who you really are. The heart is you, 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 who you are on the inside. That's the real person. Okay. Can y'all hear that? Attend to my words. Attend to my words. He says, let them not depart out of thine eye from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst. Keep them where? Keep them in the midst. Not on the corner. Not on the edge. Not on the surface. Keep them in the, right in the middle of what? Your heart. That's where the word takes on life. That's where it comes alive. That's where the change happens. That's where the transformation happens. That's where God comes in. If the word is just going to be on the mental shelves of your intellectual mind where you have only memorized scripture, which is good to do, by the way, but it needs to be done as a result of it first being in your heart. Amen? He says, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life. <laughs> they are life. Unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Right? Y'all, that's, do y'all accept the context? But see, here's the thing. If you accept the context, you need to participate in the event. <laughs> you need to actually attend to his words. You need to actually let them get in the midst of your heart and you need to discover that they are life and health to all of your flesh. You need to believe that. You need to believe that. All right. Believe it. Believing God. Believing God. Trusting. 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 The muscle of trust. The muscle of believing. 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 Believe. 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 That's what God's looking for. Believing, believing, believing my word. Get it in your heart. Get it in your heart. Believe my word. Believe me. Because you're going to, it's going to look like nothing's happening. It's going to look like nothing is what God promised and I got hyped up over and it was exciting for what God said. Now I don't see any of that. But believe. Keep believing. 
Keep believing. Keep attending. Keep attending to the word. Keep attending to the word. What you don't want to ever do is stop attending and you don't want your heart to be empty of what God's word says. So am I milking this too much for you? You see, because see, you're going to leave out of here. You're only here just for a, a couple hours on Sunday. You got another whole week ahead of you. Every day things are going to be happening. Every day, and every day you've got to make up your mind of what your life will be. You've got to put it into practice. And I'm going to tell you, 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 if you, if you find yourself being beat up or find yourself being overshadowed by the circumstances, that's all the more reason to sit down somewhere and attend to the word and don't have this response that I don't have time because I'm going through all of this and that. I heard people, I don't have time. Hey, listen, if you're going through all this, you need to sit down somewhere. You need to sit down and let God talk to you. See, participate with God. Don't try to go through life trying to do it yourself. Because the word is getting ready to take you out of your box. The word is going to take you out of your box. Uh, too many of us live in boxes. We like our boxes. We furnished our boxes, put the drapes up and all of that in our boxes because it feels good and comfortable and we're in control of our little boxes. So we don't venture. We, we might step out the box a little bit, and keep one foot in because our boxes are comfortable to us. But I'm going to tell you that's not going to remain. I'm telling you that's not going to remain. Every situation you're going to start running into, God is going to <laughs> lead you right out the box. You're going to have to participate in his word, what his word says. You can't stay in your little safe you know, arrangements of everyday living. You can't be fearful any longer. Afraid to go here, afraid to go there. You can't, you can't do that any longer. Because you belong to the king. We're king's kids. We belong to royalty. Our daddy owns everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell within. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. There is no limitation. There's no off limits for his children to go anywhere or to do anything. God's going to break us out of our box. Amen. You're going to be able to just hear God and just go and just hear God and do it. And it's not without any hesitation because God is going to get you out of this box. He's going to show you how to participate in his word and believing in it so that you can walk through wildernesses and not even worry. You can walk across Red Seas. You can cause Jordan to open. You can speak to walls of Jericho. It doesn't matter how many giants are in the land. Come on, bring them on because I got a giant slayer in my mouth. I got a sword that is undefeatable. I got a word in my mouth and you got to get to the place that we're not limited, we're not bound, we're not held back, we're not restricted. There's no more box. God is calling us to be what he called us to be in the name of Jesus. And it will be full of power and glory. Because we got a work to do. We've got people to save. We've got people to shine the light in darkness that get them out of the dark and get them out of poverty and get them out of ill health and get them off of drugs and alcohol. We've got people to pull out the dark and we are the light to be able to do it. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you. Huh. Huh. Hallelujah. 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 We are priests. 
We are kings. Yeah, we belong to him. You, you listen, his banner, the king's banner over you is love and not only love, it is power. You know, the scripture says where the word of the king is, there is power. Y'all didn't hear that. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where the word of the king is, there is power. So you say, why, why, why do I have to attend to the word? Because if you attend to the word, the word gets in the midst of your heart. Where the word of the king is, there is power. There it is. That's what he's looking for. Where, where's my word? Where's my word? Is it in your heart? Because where the word of the king is, there is power. What he says... Lord, thy word have I hid in my heart. That's, that's what you want to be able to, to say. I said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Because you said where the word of the king is, there is power. Thy word have, have I hid in my heart. And thy word, O oh Lord, forever is settled in heaven. Now in the name of Jesus, settle it. Settle it right here. Settle it right here. Settle it right here. I want your word to be in my heart and settled in the name of Jesus. Now what is all of this taking us? Because what you're going to have to do, and I'm going to speak to you, Everything that's about to happen because of who you are, belonging to God as kings, sons, kings, daughters. Jesus said, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life, and that more abundantly. The word more abundantly is a term of life, not just in terms of revival, again, I say unto you, this is an entire life change. Amen. See, he's not coming again to make your present life better. This is an entire life transformation. You're not going to think the same when God gets through. You're not going to behave the same. You're not even going to talk the same or think the same because it's going, the, the thing, what God's about to do is going to have to go into overdrive. Yeah. The word more abundantly, it means outside the box, y'all. <laughs> There's a word I saw in scripture, it, 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 it was a, you know English word, superfluous. Paul used that word. So, so you won't think I'm trying to, I'm trying to use you know, intellectual terms. Paul said the word superfluous. And it means that which is unnecessary because you have more than enough. See, when you have enough, you say, well, I, I've got I've to go and uh, eat lunch, and my lunch is $5. And somebody says, well, here, here's 10. Well, then that's $5 that was unnecessary because my lunch costs five. So if I have 10, then you have another five that is superfluous. <laughs> it was more than enough. And this is what eternal life is. Eternal life is God saying, yes, I've given you life <laughs> for you, but I'm going to give you superfluous, more than enough, because you need more than enough to go help others who don't even have any life, who don't even know him. You see what I'm saying? See, he has to endow you not just for you. Can, can y'all hear that? He has to add, he has to, he has to multiply you spiritually by his word in your heart and cause your heart to abound, not just for you, but to help those 
who don't know him to teach those who have no knowledge and never heard his word. So what God is about to do on this earth is going to be abundantly more than you can ever ask or think. It has to be superfluous, unnecessary because it not only answers your need, it will answer the need of many, many, many others. So God is calling us to now manifest. Everybody say manifest. Manifest for him. Manifest. This is a time of manifesting. This is a time of Romans 8. And this is the time of Joel 2, where he says, your floors shall over, overflow with wheat and your vats with oil. He says, this is time for superfluous, for that which is unnecessary. I'm going to not only pay off your house and your cars and your property, I'm not only going to cause your business to abound, but I'm going to give you so much more that when all your stuff is paid off, you can pay off somebody else's stuff too. This is a time I'm telling you that God is about to give you life and that more abundantly so that you can help help many other people be alive come to know God in the name of Jesus to carry his glory to carry his power all of that is unnecessary it was necessary that Jesus died for my sins but it was unnecessary for God to give me his power and glory why did God give me his power and glory because he wanted to use me he wanted me to do a work he said, I set a work before you. I set a work that you can heal people. You can raise the dead. You can give to the poor. You can feed the hungry. You can visit them that are sick. I've given you more than enough. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just stand. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand. Stand, 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 stand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything that you've gone through, everything that you suffered,